This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid off somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land, we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. The song of sweetest. Hi. My name is Mark Son, Minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the evening services here at Northfield for uh, September the 24th. We'll sing a few songs, observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a message for you that I hope will uh, lift all of us up a little bit. Here at Northfield, we sing from the songbook entitled Songs of Faith and Praise. I will give you the number and the name of the song. If you do not have that book and you wish to sing along, maybe you can Google the song. Maybe you have a song book of your own and you can find that song. The first song that we will sing is Jesus, Thy Name I Love. In our book, it is number 185, 185, Jesus, Thy Name I Love. <clears throat> Jesus, thy name I love, all other names above. Jesus, my Lord, all thou art all to me, nothing I please I see. Nothing apart from Thee, Jesus, my Lord. Thou art said Son of God, hast bought me with Thy blood. Jesus, my Lord, how mighty is thy love, all other loves above, love that I daily prove. Jesus, my Lord, soon thou wilt come again. I shall be happy then. Jesus, my Lord, then thine own face I'll see, then I shall like thee be, then evermore with thee, Jesus, my Lord. Turn to number 97. The title of this is I Sing Praises. 97. I Sing Praises. <clears throat> I sing praises to your name, O Lord. Praises to your name, O Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name, O Lord. Praises to your name, O Lord. For your name is great 
and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name, O Lord. Glory to your name, O Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name, O Lord. Glory to your name, O Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. Before the Lord's Supper, we will sing number 314. It is entitled, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and four. Uh, let's make that one, three, and four. One, three, and four. Beneath the cross of Jesus, one, three, and four. Beneath the cross of Jesus, I fain would take my stand. The shadow of a mighty rock within a weary land, a home within the will. upon the way from the burning of the noontide heat and the burden of that day upon that cross of Jesus Mine high at times can see the very dying form of one who suffered there for me, and from my smitten heart with tears to one. I confess the wonders of his glorious love and my own worthlessness. I take across thy shadow for my abiding place. I ask no other sunshine than the sunshine of His face. Content to let the world go by to know no gain nor loss. My sinful self, my only shame, my glory all the cross. We now take this time to observe the supper of our Lord which Jesus instituted on the night of which he was betrayed. When he went into the upper room with his disciples, he explained to them uh, what would happen. He uh, explained, even though they did not exactly understand, but he did say that uh, his body would be given in their stead and in that manner in our stead. And then he used the symbology of bread and wine uh, to represent his body and his blood, his body which would suffer on the cross, his blood that would be shed for the remission of our sins. 
And so several years later, the Apostle Paul, when he wrote his first letter to the Corinthian church in chapter 11, almost word for word, explained the meaning of the bread and the meaning of the cup. And uh, that uh, meaning for you and I today, some 2,000 years later, the meaning remains unchanged. And so as we look at these emblems, we remember the body of Jesus as it hung on the cross and the blood that he shed for each one of us. Let's give thanks for the bread. Our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that in your infinite wisdom, you sent Jesus down to live as a man upon the earth, to live uh, physically, to feel pain, to uh, suffer anxiety, to to feel all those things that humans feel, yet be divine. And again, in your infinite wisdom, we understood and understand that you would do away with the sacrifices of bulls and goats and that Jesus would be the one-time sacrifice for each of us. As we partake of the bread, help us to remember his body uh, and the pain that he withstood as it was nailed to the cross. We pray this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. In the last of the plagues, uh, when Moses was attempting to get the people out of Egypt, um, the only way that the angel of death could pass over and not kill the firstborn was for blood to be sprinkled upon the lampposts, uh, of the, the lentils of the house. And uh, that uh, idea of the blood uh, comes down through the centuries. Uh, that uh, it would indeed be the blood of Jesus that allows us to escape, that allows us to escape uh, the angel of death, that we might live forever and have our sins forgiven. And so as we hearken back to the cross and we see the blood that Jesus shed, understand that it is the blood of our salvation. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful that Jesus was willing to take the cross upon him. Help us as we live our lives to deny ourselves and take up his cross. Help us to understand that the blood that he shed was the blood of our salvation, the blood that forgives our sins. So each time we partake, we can remember how important that is in our lives. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And uh, for convenience sake at this time, we think in terms of giving back to the Lord. It is important that uh, we connect giving with the Lord's Supper. Because Jesus gave the ultimate gift. He gave of his life as a sacrifice one time for all. And as we give, help us to give sacrificially. Help us to remember the widow and the mite, the two mites that she gave, that she gave of her all. And let's remember that all things that we have come from you, and we are giving you but thy own. Help us to be cheerful givers. Help us to be givers that uh, understand that uh, giving is part of our job as Christians. Let's pray. Our God and Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the privilege of giving back to you. We know that uh, your church here on earth is your kingdom. And we know that uh, your kingdom uh, in order for it to function, uh, needs the money that is given back. It needs the money to go out and reach those that are lost, to help those that are in need. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to give with an open heart. Help us to give 
knowing that we're giving you but your own and help us to give in a cheerful manner, knowing that sacrifice is good. Jesus sacrificed his life for us. We are to sacrifice of our goods to give back to you. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. The last song that we'll sing is number 679. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Let's sing verses 1, 2, and 4. 1, 2, and 4. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. 1, 2, and 4. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to drink him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, all for grace to trust him more. Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease. Just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, all for grace to trust him more. I hope that uh, you involved yourself in the singing. Uh, the Lord deserves to be praised, and uh, we always want to give praises to his name. When we lift up our voices in praise, I know... Uh, the angels are singing somewhere, knowing that uh, we're doing what uh, we are supposed to be doing. For those of you who were there this morning, uh, you heard that this evening's message will be entitled, Standing Firm. All right? Standing Firm. If we will turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13. We'll find it says this. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Uh, mighty words. Mighty words for all of us as we think in terms of of standing firm. You know what? In our lives, we do stand firm for certain things, don't we? We stand firm on our principles. We stand firm on our beliefs. But we are asked here, we are asked to stand firm and be courageous and strong. That standing firm is standing firm in the faith, in the faith that we have, that Jesus Christ is indeed the Son of God, that he was there at the creation, that John chapter 1, verse 1, lets us know in the beginning was the Word, and Jesus was that Word, and explains that he was present at the creation of the world. And so with that, as we look again at uh, the title of my lesson this evening, it is uh, Stand Firm. Stand Firm means to be on guard. That's a 24-7 thing, isn't it? The scriptures 
make it very, very clear to me and hopefully to you to understand that we are to be on guard because the enemy is against God and the enemy will attack the father's children. It's kind of like a shepherd taking care of the sheep. That analogy is used over and over again. We are the sheep and Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus is the one who guards over us. And with that in mind, we understand that we're part of a spiritual battle. And many days we'll wake up forgetting that each day, each day we must stand firm for the Lord. There's no takeoff days. When we, hmm, I want to word this well so we all get the point. Um, when we allow our lives to be consumed with the temporary, we forget what is eternal. Now, that being said, we live in the now. We live in the moment. But the moment translates into what lies ahead. Okay? That's the importance of the moment. The importance of the moment is in the realization that one day there will be an eternity. And so when we just, I guess, kind of give pause and, and stop for a moment and, and think about how we need to specifically be on guard right now. What is it that comes to mind? In what ways are we being attacked? Well, you know what? When we don't stand firm, we stand in danger of having our family be attacked. We stand in danger of having our friendships being attacked. We, we have, uh, the danger of there being attacks at our workplace. But most importantly, there is also the danger of the attacks on the church. You see, just as God is active, Satan is active also. First Peter chapter five, verse eight is that famous verse in which Peter lets us know that the devil goes about uh, like a roaring lion, lion looking for people to devour. Now what? He wants to devour those that have accepted Jesus Christ when he can pull us away from God. Satan achieves victory. Now, how does this work? Well, when we look at the great people of the Old Testament and the New Testament, we see great men of God that have come to understand that it is God's will that needs to be done. And they need to stand firm in what God lets them know. It was by faith that Abraham left a rather cushy life where he was to move somewhere, somewhere that he did not know. Why did he do it? Because God let him know that he had to do it. When uh, Joshua was confronted with the walled city of Jericho, a seemingly impenetrable fortress of a city. He used God's plan to defeat the city. He, he put, he put his 
life. He put the life of his people in the hands of God. And he did what seemingly um, <laughs> seems kind of ridiculous, circling the city, uh, blowing the trumpets at last. And when we think of that, we say, wow, that's a strange thing. Why did God do that? Well, it's my thinking that God did that to let the people know I can carry out what I say I can carry out. If you just stand on guard and you just do what I tell you you're supposed to do. And so being on guard works the best when we're not reliant on our own strength, but on the help of the Holy Spirit. And what the Bible likes to call the armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6, starting with verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will, able, you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the uh, preparation of the gospel. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. What the Apostle Paul is telling us as he was divinely uh, inspired is we have the equipment to stand firm. We are able to stand firm, but it's not on our own. All of these pieces of armor are godly pieces. We're, we're not left in the battle vulnerable, but we're given what we need to fight that battle. And you know what? Uh, you know, we're told that we might suffer setbacks, but we're told to persevere. Stand firm first in the faith. Here is the call to stand firm. I believe when we think of the word firm, what we picture is something like a rock, a strong muscle, a wall. I imagine something immovable, steady, something that will not shake, given the idea that it would fall. We're, we're told of the wise man who built his house upon the rock rather than upon the sand. And the Apostle Paul, again, puts it in proper perspective in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1, where he says that no man can lay a foundation, but that foundation which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. There's nothing that you and I can build in our lives that will be more firm than choosing to trust in Jesus. When Jesus is the king, when he's the sovereign over our lives, when we place our complete faith in him, we are now stable. We are now immovable in him. 
It, it's the reason why the, in the Old Testament, it tells us to take refuge. He's the reason that we can have the confidence and a place of refuge in the difficulties of life. He can give us the peace and the bravery to withstand. When the storms come, uh, when the homes are built on the rock to be able to withstand the storm, although the storm might be mighty, there will be no crumbling because we have built our faith upon the rock that is Jesus Christ. Second Timothy chapter two, verse 19 says, nevertheless, the firm foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his and everyone who names the name of the Lord is to abstain from wickedness. We can take solace and rest and assured that God knows that we are his, that we know that God can help us and he's always just a prayer away. We can trust him. You know, we, we can trust him that when we sit in a chair, we know the chair won't break. That when we get in a plane, that the, the plane will land. We have the promise that he's with us and he will keep us safe in his arms. Finally, be courageous in taking your stand. Be strong. You know what? It's easy to live in fear. We can fall into the pit of anxiety and worry, but Christ has called us to be courageous. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, he says, Be anxious in nothing but by fear and supplication. Let your needs be known of God. And the wonder of all that is that he says, and then the peace that surpasses all understanding will be with us. We have the promise that we can be safe in Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that a wonderful thought that we have? The, the calling is there today as it was 2,000 years ago when these words were written. The Lord is always with his people. And as long as we stay with him, he remains with us. We must intersect our faith with our lives. We know the enemy is at work. And we know that our faith will be tested. What we have to do is remember to stand firm, not rely on our own abilities in the face of trials, but placing our trust in the Lord. Be anxious in nothing because we know the Lord will be with us and the Lord will equip us and enable us to be courageous and strong through his spirit. I pray that this message uh, rang true to all of us. It rings true to us because we have taken on Jesus in our lives and we know that he is our mediator sitting at the right hand of God. We know it because we've been instructed to pray to our God and to pray in his name. Jesus said, if you want to see the Father, you see the Father in me. And I'm doing the Father's will, and that's what we are to do. His will is that we become his children. So if you're not a child of God this evening, we offer you that invitation. If you need to come to the Lord, we pray that you will do so. If you need to confess, repent, and be baptized, we pray that this is what you will do in your life. Uh, if you need that at this time, get in touch with one of us and we will be there for you. Let's pray as we end the service. Our Heavenly Father, we just uh, pray with all of our hearts that we would stand firm 
in our lives, despite what happens, understanding that as children of God, that you care for us and that you nurture us, that Jesus is our great shepherd and he shepherds his flock. Help us to stand strong in the faith. Help us so that we can set an example for those around us because that's what we are to be. We are to be godly people so that we can set the bar as how Christians ought to act so that people, as the Apostle Paul uh, so aptly put, might see Christ living in us. Continue to be with us. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, as we, as we wake up tomorrow morning, that we'll wake up knowing that it's another day to stand firm in the faith. Continue to be with us. Continue to bless us. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. I hope all of you will be safe, and may God bless you all. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid off somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land, 